What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to do a full review of my EF, so that's why we are out here today. I'm gonna do basically a Doug DeMuro style kind of thing where we go over absolutely everything about this car and uh, yeah, it's gonna be super sick. So let's go ahead, let's jump right into it. All right, so starting off, I just wanna talk about the styling of this car. This car was um, introduced in 1988, I believe. And so that is definitely apparent with the styling. This particular model is a 91. So it was the last year that the EF Civic hatch was created. Uh, there were several different trims of the EF hatch. There was the DX version. Um, there's so many different chassis codes like uh, the ED6, the EF8, EF9, stuff like that. EF8 might be a CRX if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's very, very confusing. That's why I get them mixed up constantly. But um, yeah, this car was uh, definitely um, an icon in the Japanese scene during the um, late 90s and early 2000s. Known for its lightweight and um, reliable engines, these cars were definitely uh, a prime selection for a lot of people in the Japanese scene. And although they didn't really make their way over to the United States in that fashion until later on after um, it had become a thing in Japan. It was still um, an incredibly great car and still is to this day. So I think these cars have been styled beautifully. I think it is honestly one of Honda's best looking cars that they ever created along with the, uh, you know, the NSX and the EG hatch is another one of my favorites, but it's just, all of the proportions are so well thought out and it's got this very boxy 80s look, but it's also kind of a transition period into the 90s when things were starting to get a little more rounded out. And you can really see that with the arches right here and how the arches are kind of rounded off. And as well as the roof line here, it's got a nice, um, rounded roof line and a rounded edge here, but it still retains that boxy look with the bumpers and stuff. And I really love how it turned out. And um, especially with the aero additions that I've done to this specific car, it really is a beautiful car all around. Definitely one of Honda's best. I will say that for sure. So now focusing on the rear end, one of my favorite design pieces of this car that they had was the singular tail light that runs all the way from the left to the right side. And I really just think that that complements this era of car so well. And so many cars were doing this, like the AE86. Um, and you know, even this car, there, there's just so many I could go on about that have that singular tail light all the way in the back. And it's one of my favorite looks of all time. Um, especially with the way that the rear bumper sits on the car and it just has this very angular uh, vibe to it as well as the complementation of the um, spoiler up top here it really is such a great looking car now i have modified the wheels on this car so that does help a little bit with the styling the oem wheels are much smaller than this but um, i've gone up a size so these are 15 inch wheels these are mugen mf10s and they are a beautiful wheel and i think it complements the rest of this car so well all right so now if we move on to the inside of this car you can really tell that this thing was designed in the late 80s just by the shape of the dash and the amount of room that's in here this was one of the models that it was actually mentioned um it was a big thing in the manual that this car had been extended in the front end so you had more foot room which is uh hilarious nowadays considering the amount of leg room we get in a car but um yeah it's actually quite spacious in here the visibility is absolutely fantastic you can see all around you i'll sit down in the seat for you so you can see what i'm talking about but uh yeah the dash shape here very angular uh, there's this nice pocket here where you can kind of set stuff down like if you take my phone for example it just kind of sits right in there and uh, you can put so many things over there. Um, so I really like this dash, dash design that they have going on here. It's not really so much a thing anymore, which is unfortunate, um, but you know, this was a thing in the late 80s and they've done a fantastic job here. Now the doors have this very interesting design on them if we look at this and you can see uh, this particular model doesn't have the carpet insert that's usually right here and the Japanese model sometimes has a carpet insert that goes over this whole light blue piece right here. But yeah, the door is just extremely simplistic, nothing here. Uh, basically this one little arm handle right here and then uh, of course roll up and roll down windows, which is our only uh, option here. So um, yeah, very interesting. Um, the steering wheel has been modified for this car. So normally it comes with a um, weird two spoke uh, type wheel. 
um, and it just absolutely felt terrible. So that was one of the first things that I chucked off of this car. Um, this car is much better um, with the personal steering wheel that I put in here. I absolutely love it. I have put a Skunk 2 single bend short shifter in here. I absolutely love this short shifter. It was easily the best mod I ever did to this car. Um, but of course, any original Honda Civic hatchback from this era is not going to have that in the throws were very, very long. And so you can see if we go in here, I could show you the throws and just how notchy they are. It really goes into gear perfectly. I've never had any issues with it shifting into gear. Um, it is definitely one of my favorite mods of all time. Super, super sick. Now this particular car has had the passenger seat replaced with this, um, I don't know, a six gen SI seat or something like that. Something from like the 2006 era. I really don't like these seats. I'm not a fan of the decision that the previous owner made replacing those, <laughs> um, but uh, it is what it is. And the original seats are quite expensive and hard to find. So that's why this has remained in here. All right, so now if we head into the back here, you can see uh, there's plenty of space back here. Um, you could definitely fit two adults back here and the visibility is just absolutely fantastic. Like if you are sitting in the driver's seat, there is so much glass in this car. So one thing to keep in mind is it does get very hot in the summer because there is a lot of glass, but the trade-off is you can see absolutely everything. And so it's great to have uh, visibility in all areas of the car. One amazing thing about this car though, is that it is just so bare bones. It really is just a driving machine to get you from point A to point B. And that's really it. There isn't, there isn't really anything super excessive about this car, no luxury features or anything like that. It is just simply a transportation vehicle. And so here's the vents up top. So these are how the vents work. This um, pushes the vent left or right. And this closes the vent up here very simplistic it is basically as bare bones as you get uh, they're very brittle now because they are old so they kind of feel like they're gonna break but they've held up at least this far which is uh, pretty impressive and so this vent right here is one of my favorite vents in this car and this is a fresh air vent so if you're ever driving and it's getting super hot in here and you just want some fresh air from outside you just move this over and it allows fresh air to come in from the cabin and uh, it is Honestly, one of the greatest things I think I've ever had in a car. Now, one thing I absolutely love about this car, if I close the doors here, um, you have your wing mirror controls right here, but this vent right here, what is this? And this is one of my favorite vents in this car, probably my favorite vent in this car, because when you have it set to this right here, the windshield defogger um, with the footrest thing, you get air hot air that comes through the window and so sometimes it's nice to drive with the window down and you can just put your hand right here and you get hot air coming out and it heats your hands up and it is the best thing ever i absolutely love that it's on both sides it is something that honda thought out very very well and it is honestly one of my favorite things ever all right so then just to the left of your seat here you have your gas tank control and your uh, trunk opening mechanism and so to open the gas tank it is this small one right here so you just pull that up and it opens up the tank just like this and this is what the tank looks like inside very old school very basic and so that closes just like that and then i'm not going to do it but basically to open the trunk you just uh pull it like this actually you know what i decided against it i am going to do it i'll show you what's in here um you can see it just opens up just like this and it is held up by struts and uh, normally there's a middle piece that goes across here but i've taken that out just because i don't usually store anything back here but um yeah that is what the trunk looks like and if it helps uh, there is a pretty good amount of space in here i can fit my golf clubs in here without any issues so uh yeah there is definitely some use to the trunk all right so now making our way to the front the engine the heart of this car we are revealed to a dual point injection D15 B2 engine. And this is a very interesting engine to say the least. Now you can absolutely beat on this engine and you will never have any problems. That is just the way Hondas were built back in the day. But there are several different versions of D series engines that came in the EF. And so I'll leave a Wikipedia page if you're interested in looking in that, but basically, 
the SI versions came with uh, multi-point fuel injection up top. So many people swap those um, intake manifolds in and swap the whole air system from the SI versions into these base model Civics. And then in Japan, they came with, I believe, the B-18 engine over there, um, which is, uh, I think, a B-18C, if I'm being exact. And those are uh, quite expensive to find nowadays, um, but those are uh, a VTEC engine and much stronger than what was put in here. And I believe that trim is called the SIR, if I'm not mistaken. I know one of you guys will um, correct me in the comments and provide the correct information if I missed anything there. But yeah, you can see this is what the engine bay looks like. There is plenty of room in here. Um, it's very, very simple. It's very easy to work on. I can say from experience, uh, you really don't have any trouble finding anything in here because there really isn't much in here. <laughs> there is a, you know, complete lack of modern technology in here. It's basically just a motorcycle engine in car form. So uh, yeah, very, very easy to work on and uh, very reliable. So yeah, that is a um, exterior and interior review of uh, this EF Civic in particular. But I say we go ahead and get the full experience and we drive this car and really see what it's like to own an EF. All right, a couple of things that I uh, forgot to mention in um, the uh, interior review right there. You do have this nice little uh, ashtray right there that sticks out. And then you also have this uh, nice little uh, area right here to put things if you're interested in doing that. I usually just keep some extra fuses and bolts in there just in case. Um, but yeah, really not a whole ton of storage in this car. Uh, that's basically all you get and the glove box as well, which is just a uh, standard glove box. But uh, yeah, what is it like to drive? Well, it's extremely fun. I can say that, but uh, let's go ahead. Let's get started because it definitely is an experience. So one thing to keep in mind about this car is that it has no power steering and it has no ABS and it has no traction control. So at all times, you really need to stay focused because basically you're the only thing that's keeping the car on the road. Now this car does have coilovers, so that does mean the suspension um, is a little bumpier than usual. I would assume with stock suspension, this car is incredibly smooth. Uh, the brakes are not great. You of course have uh, front disc brakes and rear drum brakes. So um, in a lightweight car like this, you don't really need disc brakes in the rear, but you can definitely feel the difference of how much better disc brakes would be in a car like this. Now, one thing you notice right away when you drive this car is that it is not very fast. And I will show you exactly why it is not very fast. If we go to second gear, let's slow down to 30 miles an hour. This is my foot to the floor. That's one thing you absolutely, absolutely have to get used to when driving this car is that even just accelerating to get on the highway, you are going to be going very slow and basically going to have your foot to the floor on an exit ramp. It is very different from modern day traffic driving. A couple of points to note about this car is that the front end is extremely light and that was one of the first things that i would say i uh, really noticed when i drove this car for the first time is it just has a very light front end and you can really chuck it into the corners and you know experience how quick of a car this is because of that feature but one thing to keep in mind definitely is the front end, yes, is very light, but the rear end, you can feel a little bit of the weight of the hatch over the rear end. And so it's important that um, when you are chucking this car around, I've had multiple times where you can feel the rear kind of slide on you and step out a little bit. And so it's very important to um, keep that in mind when you're driving this car, hard that is. Other than that, at low speeds, this is a very typical car to drive. It drives like, uh, you know, buttery smooth. I've never had any issues driving this car around in traffic. Um, it is a little bumpy when you get on some rough roads, but what car is it, you know? 
So I absolutely have no issues with driving this car every day. I do use it as a daily and I use it to pick up groceries, go to the drive throughs stuff that you would do, you know, just every single day. And I have absolutely no issues with driving this car like that. All right, so I've taken this car to some roads that it's more suited for, so you guys can see just how good of a car this is on windy roads and why I love doing it so much. Now it is wet outside, so I am gonna be a little careful, but I absolutely love driving this car on roads like this. You know, one of the most fun things about this car, I would say, is that it's not fast, so you feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are, therefore it is a lot of fun. So all of these corners are, you know, really sharp and there's a lot of elevation change around here. So things like this are, you know, super fun to do in this car and these are really the roads that this car is meant for. All right, so this is a pure toge style road for this car. And these are the type of roads that suit this car absolutely the best. Now it is definitely slippery, I can feel that right now, so we're not gonna go too crazy today, but I do want to show you guys what it's like to own this car and drive it on a great road like this. Now it isn't fast by any means, but at no point do I ever feel out of control in this car. I feel like this car just takes care of me very, very well. And if that's something you're looking for in a toge driving car, then this is probably the car for you. Of course, we are front wheel drive. We have about, I would say, give or take 100 horsepower. So you can see hills like this, it does kind of struggle to get up. But at the same time, you can have a lot of fun and not worry about, you know, endangering others. Obviously, there's other people around me here, and at no point do I ever feel like, you know, I'm putting other people in danger because I'm having a great time in this car, driving this right now, and I'm really, really enjoying this. And these roads are perfect for this type of car, but I'm also not hurting anybody because we're not going insanely fast. And I think part of it is due to the fact that it doesn't have power steering. You can really feel the connection to the road. But take a look at this elevation change right here. How cool is this part? And this chassis is just taking it so well. And it's, it does such a phenomenal job at uh, driving on roads like this. And you can have a great time. from 20 to 60 there so it does have a little bit of pull and it is very light so um, you know it does feel jumpy and skittish is the word I'll use but yeah it's nothing crazy you're not gonna be uh, impressing yourself too much or anything like that one of my favorite things though is the gearbox I just love to downshift in this car even when you don't have to get that Honda rasp with this car and the D-Series engine, but I think that's what makes it really, really fun is, you know, it's old school technology and that's something that we don't have nowadays, which is such a charm and such a nostalgic noise to hear, you know, those late 80s cars and those 90s cars that had those screaming engines and you really get that with this car. But this car is handling the rain and wet conditions so well. And I think that's why I just love to drive it so much. You always find me catching, you know, catching it raining outside and going for a drive in this car. And how 
how beautiful is this road right here? Is this not one of the most amazing roads you've ever seen? This is why I love Connecticut. I love where I'm from. We got the mail truck on the toge. They're flying. <laughs> I do have to kind of repeat myself though, the brakes are not the best. They are definitely a weak point of this car. But corners like this, so fun in this car. So yeah, I mean, my review of the EF Civic, absolutely, you should get one. I really do. But then best part about it, right, is we're back in town and it's just super smooth. You can do all your errands, you can drive it every day. It's just the best of both worlds. And I think that's why this is one of my favorite cars ever, for sure. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that review of my car and basically a full walk around of everything. I actually quite enjoyed that and it's gonna be fun for me to look back in maybe a couple years and rewatch this video again. But yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you to all the new subscribers lately and everybody who has been commenting on the videos and I will catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out. <laughs>